Good evening, everyone. I hope everyone's enjoying the conference so far. Uh, and again, I want to thank Brandon Muramatsu. I think he's just done a wonderful job putting this together. <laughs> Welcome to this, the inaugural presentation of our awards for open courseware excellence. I'm Steve Carson, and I'm incoherent at this point, but <laughs> you'll have to bear with me. Um, so before we get started today, there are a couple of sort of consortium pieces of business that we need to take care of. Um, so uh, first, we haven't done enough uh, in the last couple of days to thank the sustaining members of the consortium. These are inst uh, institutions and organizations that have committed funds significantly higher than our annual dues in support of the consortium. And they're absolutely vital to uh, the financial stability of the consortium, especially in the early going. And, th and uh, so we'd like to uh, once again recognize all of the universities that have supported us and the, the organizations. Thank you so much. Um, change for an organization is, is always a good thing, and I think especially an organization that represents as, as diverse a set of interests as uh, the Open Courseware Consortium does. And so turnover on our board of directors is a natural, normal, and expected thing. Um, but it's all, always a bittersweet thing for those of us who's, who have been fortunate enough to serve on the board, uh, because in helping to shape this organization together, um, we've also become very, very good friends. And uh, so in some ways, when, when a member of the board steps down, um, it's, it's like um, uh, losing a friend in, in a, a place where you go often and you, and you, you expect to see them there. Um, and so we have one member of our board who, who's not gone forever, obviously, but <laughs> uh, one, one member of our board who's, who's stepped down uh, this morning after the elections, and I, I do count him as a personal friend and as a wise counselor for the organization. Um, he's uh, been very quietly a tremendously effective leader, especially in the areas of technology, uh, and uh, I desperately hope he'll continue to be engaged in uh, the consortium governance activities uh, on committees and in other ways going forward. So please, Pepe, would you stand up, and let's recognize Jose for his contributions. <laughs> Um, and uh, keeping with the theme of organizational change, it's my distinct pleasure this evening uh, to announce that I have been succeeded as president of the organization by Anka Mulder of TU Delft. Uh, I cannot think of, yeah, my boss is really happy about this one. <laughs> I, I cannot think of a more capable uh, person to take over leadership of the organization. Anka has just been fantastic for us in the last uh, three years uh, and has uh, contributed in ways I, I don't have time tonight really to articulate, um, but I'm sure we'll be able to list them uh, later when she's done with her tenure as president. Uh, so Anka, if you would, uh, let's uh, congratulate you. And Now, Steve has given me one minute to say something because you're all looking forward to your dinner. And uh, Steve has already thanked, I think, almost everybody that today and yesterday, MIT for hosting us, Next for sponsoring uh, this conference, the Hewlett Foundation for, uh, well, sponsoring us uh, for many, many years. And I think without the Hewlett Foundation, many of our projects would not even have started. Um, you thanked the staff, Pepe, and even me, so now it's time to thank Steve. And it's my honor to thank Steve, because um, I want to thank Steve for his vision, for his ideas, for his support to many organizations, to many of us who started OpenCourseWare, and for his leadership as president. And I think a lot has changed in these three years. I was just talking uh, um, with my colleague from MIT about uh, the vibe you have today, which is very different from a few years ago. I think we've gone from uh, well, one university, MIT, 
uh, active in open courseware to 250 active members, which is, I think, amazing. Uh, we've gone from uh, uh, a few hundred courses from MIT to 15,000 courses online. And I think the thing that's happening now is that we're changing from a focus on, uh, on producing materials and putting them online to the user. So what is actually going to happen with our material? And that will be a huge, big next step. And um, what well, you've done a lot of that. And on top of that, uh, Steve had to manage this board, this, this board of people from all kinds of different countries. And, um, well, I am Dutch, and there's a Dutch expression about um, managing a wheelbarrow with frogs. <laughs> ah, you seem to understand what that means. I think in English that would translate into uh, herding cats, is that right? <laughs> Now, I don't think we're a very difficult bunch of people as a board, but we do come from different countries, from every continent. So we have different cultures and uh, different ways of working, and we have different ways of speaking English. That's the most difficult thing. We have Dutch English, Spanish English, Korean English, uh, Japanese English, and when Andy was still on our board, we even had English English. <laughs> And you can judge for yourself which was the most difficult thing to understand. <laughs> now, uh, Steve has managed all of this. And on top of that, he's just a great, great friend. I think he's not even turned this board into, he's not only turned this board into an effective board, but also a board of friends. This is what you just mentioned when uh, we said bye-bye to Pepe. We're really a bunch of friends. And I think that's uh, fantastic. So um, I'm very sad that you're giving up this job, honestly. And uh, I'm really happy that you're staying on as a board member and also as the chair of the awards committee, because you will uh, address that top topic uh, later on. And on behalf of all the board members and the staff, I would like to say thank you and a big round of applause for you. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's um, obviously my extreme pleasure to precede Anka as president because she's clearly a hard act to follow. So I'm going to try to be try to be as eloquent and entertaining as, as she has been. Um, so the reason we're here tonight, uh, awards. We're giving out awards for the first time. We're 10 years old now. We have a bit of history. Um, but the real reason uh, we're giving out awards, at least in my opinion, is because we've gotten just so big. And I, I've been consumed by the feeling every time I go to one of these meetings in the past five years or so, that there's just no way anymore to wrap your arms around everything that's going on in the Open Courseware Consortium. It used to be that I would actually hand count all of the courses that were published by the consortium members so that we could create those charts that told you how many courses there were. Uh, there are not enough days in the year now for me to count all the courses that this organization, this group of people, has published together. Um, and you know, we struggle with the issue of metadata. We struggle with the issue of search. We struggle with the issue of how to surface the great material, the great work that's being done by the members of this organization. And so in small part, that's what these awards are about. They're about recognizing the contributions from across the consortium that make this such a unique and wonderful organization. It's not possible for us to recognize everybody uh, who has made uh, such an outstanding contribution, of course. Um, and there are many people who will not be honored that we wish we could have honored, but we had to keep the night relatively short for everybody. Um, so. Before we begin, there's also another clear reason we're having this award ceremony, and because attribution is one of our cultural norms here, uh, I have to give credit to uh, Pedro and Universia for uh, proving the idea with their, their award program in the past four years. It was an inspiration to us and certainly has served to add energy to their community, so uh, in part credit belongs to, to Universia. Uh, how are we providing these awards? Well, in a couple of ways. The first is the way we provide anything in this community. That's through the hard volunteer efforts of individuals. And so uh, the consortium board deserves credit. They uh, were the body that deliberated about the individual awards. Uh, the names are listed there. 
Uh, and then the site and, award com uh, the site and course awards uh, were chosen by the awards committee, which I chaired. Uh, Gordon Lockhart, Jose, I'm going to butcher this name, Gigante, Guillermo del, del Toro, and Sophie Tuz, who's here tonight, right? Sophie, you're here somewhere? Yes, so thank you. Guillermo's not here, right? I, I think I checked the roles. Okay, please stand up. You, you deserve to be recognized for your efforts. Another way we're doing this is through sponsorship. One of the things uh, that Next has supported for this, this event is the awards program and uh, the awards ceremony. We wouldn't be having this lovely event if it weren't for the support we've gotten. Next has also provided direct support for the uh, conference as a whole and also supported the travel of some of our participants from various areas around the country, or around the world, I'm sorry. Uh, so we have Brian Ouellette, Peter Smith, Susan Huggins, and I forgot to put your name on there. <laughs> I'm sorry, Keisha? Kezia. Kezia. Would you stand up, please? If you haven't had the opportunity to stop by and talk to them about what they're doing, please do. It's a really exciting project that they've got going, and it's really starting to get traction right now. Uh, and they're just plain great people. So please, take the opportunity. Um, so what are the awards we're giving out tonight? Uh, we've sent this out in various emails and postings on the blog, and it still probably was not quite clear to the community. So I thought before we got started, I would just run through what they are. Uh, so we actually have three types of awards that we're presenting tonight. The first is awards for individuals within the community uh, who have made outstanding commitments to our common effort. There's three different kinds, educator, leadership, and a special award we called the President's Award. So those we'll do first. Uh, we also have awards for sites. We have an award for the best new site to try to surface some of the more recent activity. Uh, technical achievement. Uh, and a landmark site, just to recognize an existing site that's been out there the, a while that you might not know of that you really should. Uh, and finally, we have awards for courses. What we did was we broke it up into two categories uh, because we were afraid that all the video and multimedia courses would just overwhelm all the other courses. And we think the text contributions in many ways are um, you know, just as incredible as the multimedia ones. They may not be as flashy, but the content they provide and in the way that they provide it which moves offline very gracefully and I think is an important aspect of open courseware, uh, are equally worth noting. So we'll prevent, we'll, we have five of each of those awards and we'll share those winners. The, the site and course, uh, individual awards were previously announced. Uh, we have not announced the course awards yet, so that's our surprise at the end of the evening. Um, so who are the winners of these awards? Well, uh, open courseware begins with education and educators and the material that they provide uh, for our open courseware courses. So I think it's only fitting that we start with the educator award tonight. Um, the educator award, oops, sorry, the educator award uh, this year is being given to Dr. Walter Lewin, a uh, physics professor at MIT. Um, Dr. Lewin uh, is probably the most well-known figure in the open courseware faculty community at this point. His videos have been watched literally uh, by millions and millions of people. And that's significant in a couple of different ways. Uh, the first is simply the reach uh, that he's had with his materials. Uh, he's placed three courses on MIT open courseware, uh, 801 Classical Mechanics, 802 Electricity and Magnetism, and 803 Vibrations and Waves. In total, more than 100 video lectures. Uh, his content has also been used as the core content for one of our new scholar courses. If you saw our presentation on those, those are amazing new resources. And they, that particular one owes uh, a, a great debt to uh, Dr. Lewin's materials. I took the opportunity to add up all of the different visits to his sites, to the YouTube videos, to all of the other ways that his materials are distributed and uh, more than five million visits in total. That's just an astounding number. Um, but beyond the education that he's made available to millions around the world, uh, I think that Dr. Loon has made an even more significant contribution to uh, MIT OpenCourseWare and to the OpenCourseWare movement. And that is really uh, to bring uh, to the attention of an enormous audience the whole concept of OpenCourseWare 
and uh, the uh, rich resources that are available from all of our courses on MIT's site for certain and on all of the sites throughout the world. It's professors who provide this kind of material that draw this kind of attention. And you can see there, uh, the New York Times, uh, he was in, in the AP. Uh, this is how we know uh, that we arrived as a movement, uh, is when he was covered in O Magazine. When, when Oprah takes notice, you know you've arrived. So it, it's done tremendous, tremendous service for the movement as a whole. Um, and I should point out that Dr. Lewin has uh, been sharing his content long before there was the concept of open courseware, open educational uh, resources. The video lectures that appear on our site were not recorded for our site, but in fact were recorded previously and were shared in the 1990s on Seattle Public Television. And in the uh, scholar course, there are also uh, help sessions that he had done and that were broadcast on the MIT TV network. Uh, so he was sharing uh, educational materials through technology long before the institute uh, took it up as a mission uh, across the school. Uh, so for these reasons, it really is our distinct honor to present to Dr. Lewin our first uh, award for Open Courseware Excellence for Educator. Dr. Lewin, would you like to say a few words? I have your award here. Also. Thank you very much. Thank you. Congratulations. So I have 101 lectures on the web, and these are being watched yearly by roughly 2 million people, about 6,000 people per day. So every day I receive roughly 30 messages from people all over the world. I call it my fan mail. It's about 10,000 per year, and I answer them all. Some of them, some of them are immensely moving. Many of them say, your lectures have changed my life. I'm now looking at the world in a completely different way. And I get these messages from kids which are 15 years old to people who are in their 90s. It is absolutely, it is so rewarding. Not only have I changed their lives, but in that sense they have changed my life. And so yesterday, I was beginning to think about how this all happened. And for me, it happened perhaps in 1997 when a man of vision, he may not be here, Dick Larson, who at the time was a professor of electrical engineering, came to me and said, Walter, let's face it, your lectures are very special. And therefore, they should really be videotaped. He got a grant, a very generous grant, and so in 1999, my 801 Newtonian mechanic lectures were, were taped. And then a few years later, he got another grant, and then my 802 lectures were taped, electricity and magnetism. So now you have all these wonderful lectures, 
And what are you going to do with them? A man of vision, but here are the lectures. How do we get them out to the world? It just so happens that we had a few more people at MIT with great vision. And one of it was Dick Yu, who came up to, with, with the idea of OCW. And he went to the president of MIT, was Chuck Vest at the time, and Chuck Vest immediately recognized the incredible importance, the incredible impact that this might have on the world. And so Chuck Vest also had vision and supported it very strongly. Dick Larson and I couldn't be more happy because he was the vehicle that we had been waiting for. This was the vehicle that would carry my lectures out all over the world. And they were immediately copied by iTunes U, by YouTube, YouTube by Academic Earth. And they were very successful right from the start. So people came to me and say, well, now that you've done 801 and 802, you surely want to have 803 also taped, vibrations and waves. So I went to Dick Larson and I said, come on, you've got to come up with some money because we've got to do 803. <laughs> and Dick said, well, Walter, it just so happens that I have now a different position at MIT. I can't get you any funding anymore. So I did what any physics professor would do. I went to the leadership of the physics department. We're talking now about the year 2002. And I said, look, 801 and 802 were quite successful. That was already known. Could you support me financially on 803? And I still have a copy of their email. And it said, we are not interested in videotaped lectures by Professor Walter Lewin. That was the physics department of MIT. The reason why I mention it, so that you know that at MIT, not only do we have people with vision, In any case, I did find funding for 803, and so my 803 lectures are also on the web. This whole episode has changed my life in a way that you cannot even imagine. It is the highlight of my life, of my 43 years being a professor of physics at MIT. It's with me every day. I communicate every day with two dozen people all over the world. And this is the result of the vision of people. Dick Larson, if he is here, was one of them. Dick Yu was one of them. And Chuck Vest was one of them. And I want to thank these people with vision who have created a mechanism which, has, which is a revolution in education. And there's no end to this. I even worry sometimes about where the end may be. It's only the beginning. And it is a wonderful beginning, unprecedented. It is the best thing that happened since sliced bread. <laughs> I want to thank these people with vision, and I want to thank you all. Congratulations again. Do you need help? Is this a good one? Yeah. yeah, that's it. Got it? Okay. Can I take it? You may. <laughs> it's all yours. Thank you. We got the photo op going on up here. Yes, this, this is Dick Larson here, please. So educators and course content are, are the heart of what we do. Um, but, oh, 
You know what? I totally forgot to play this. To you. I'm going to go ahead Is and do this, this anyways, because if you haven't been in Dr. Lewin's classrooms, you really ought to. One of the most remarkable things I just mentioned to you is that the period of the oscillations is independent of the mass of the object. That would mean if I join the bob and I swing down with the bob, that you should get that same period. Or should you not? I'm asking you a question before we do this awful experiment. You count. Wow, my expectations are high. I want to hear you loud. You ready for this? Yeah. Three, two, one. <laughs> and here is the femur of an elephant. Zero. <laughs> so I need a volunteer. One, two, relax. What does it remind you of? Ten T with Walter Lewin. Forty five point six plus or minus zero point one seconds. Physics works, I'm telling you. <laughs> One of the most remarkable things I... You know, I, I think one of the earliest things I heard about video lectures was that they were going to make rock stars out of faculty members and put all the other fa faculty members out of work. Well, at least half of that's been true, I've got to tell you, because if there's a rock star in the open courseware world, it's, it's Walter Lewin. Okay, so our next award is an uh, award for leadership. Um, Obviously, courses and uh, educators are the heart and soul of what we do, uh, but open courseware projects don't happen without champions. And I've worked with lots and lots and lots of open courseware projects around the world, and every single one of them has had a champion. Those champions come from all different uh, places in educational organizations, outside of educational organizations. And I think that's one of the things that makes uh, these meetings such spectacular fun is it's not just professors, it's not just educational technologists, it's not just academic leaders, but it's a mix of all of them, and all of them are passionately committed to the cause of openly sharing educational materials. It makes for a fantastic environment uh, for sharing and for creativity. Um, but even among champions, there are champions. And uh, some people champion one project, other people champion 60, 70? I don't know, how many are there now? Um, more than a thousand courses, I believe, across the University of uh, OCW crowd. And all of those, in some measure, are the result of hard work uh, by Pedro Aranzati. Um, again, when, when we talk about a community this old, there are, there are old friends. And uh, certainly Pedro is, is what I would consider an old friend. He's been there from the very beginning. He was there in 2005 when we first met, uh, February 17th, by the way, that date is forever stuck in my head, uh, to talk about forming the Open Courseware Consortium. And when I think of his efforts, the first word that comes to mind is, is tireless. Um, but then I remember February 17th, 2005, when he came into the room exhausted from an, a flight coming into Boston at the last minute. And I remember uh, the next fall at uh, Utah when we had the first Open Courseware Consortium meeting, and he flew in at the last minute and was exhausted the whole time. Now, I, re I remember 2007 or 6, whichever it was in Santander, when Pedro hosted uh, the Open Courseware Consortium meeting and the meeting of the Board of Directors of Universia at the same time that the Board of Directors for Banco Santander was meeting. Then he looked really, really tired. So um, as much as I'd like to give him credit for being tireless, I know he's not. <laughs> but what he gets done is amazing. Uh, he started off leading the effort to translate uh, MIT Open Courseware's materials uh, from English into Spanish and Portuguese. Um, and like many of the other translation efforts, he realized very quickly that while it's valuable to translate MIT's materials, it's even more valuable to, to share the materials that are being generated by the Spanish universities. 
And so um, he's led uh, Spanish and Latin American universities, as I said, in publishing more than a thousand languages. He led the efforts to translate metadata uh, for those courses into 14 or more languages, an effort that doesn't get enough attention within the community. By translating the metadata alone, he's been able to drive enormous increases in traffic to those courses. And I think it's a lesson we should all look more closely at as we're trying to get our materials to, to broader and broader audiences. Um, as I said, he oversaw the award program that led to this award program. So in a way, he's kind of giving himself an award tonight, which Strange things happen in this community. Uh, and he's worked uh, lobbying in the public sector to include uh, OCW as part of the merits for instructors there as well. So he's a policy advocate as well. Uh, and it is really my true pleasure to present to him tonight our 2011 Leadership Award for Open Courseware Excellence. Pedro? Good evening, everybody. Uh, I wanted to dedicate this award to my absolutely bewildered parents that on their 46th uh, wedding anniversary that is today, which are absolutely amazed. And they are absolutely amazed at how a 16-year-old student like I was can be awarded by a consortium of universities. Amazing. <laughs> but jokes apart, I wanted to thank you all for this award. I wanted to thank especially the members of the board at the consortium, and very, very especially to all the uh, uh, Ibero-American universities that believed in Universia and bought the open courseware movement from the very beginning, and that'd be all. Thank you very much. <laughs> and then there are contributions uh, to our efforts that defy both definition uh, and PowerPoint. So I'm not sure I can quite capture what, what uh, on these slides, everything that, that Kathy Casterly has done for the open courseware community. Uh, she's currently CEO of Creative Commons, but uh, her prior roles are equally well known, I think, in this community at Hewlett, at Carnegie. Um, and through those various roles, she has made um, enormous contributions to the field. Uh, some of them clearly were financial, guiding funding to many of the projects that are represented here. Uh, some of the early funding for Open Courseware Connections, Open Learn, OER Africa, and more. Um, but I, certainly more significantly than that, in this group of separate projects that were doing different things with different ideas, Kathy, and in, in, in partnership with Mike Smith, and if we could break the award into two pieces, one would go to Mike, certainly. Um, Kathy provided vision for uh, a movement that was much larger and much broader than open courseware, and a vision uh, that provided a way for all of these different projects to work in reinforcing one another and making each other more effective. Um, beyond that, Kathy is an incredibly, incredibly talented program officer. Um, and it's not an easy job. Uh, I know in working with her at OpenCourseWare uh, and with the OpenCourseWare Consortium, she has the unique talent of being able to provide input and criticism as a funder in a way that's neither intrusive nor, nor resented nor uh, at all um, disruptive to the environment that she's working in and in fact is welcomed as uh, the kind of advice that you really need to make a program successful. And I think that's a, a tremendously difficult thing to do. I can't imagine trying to do that. Um, and so I think for that she deserves an enormous amount of credit in, in helping all of the projects that she's helped to uh, fund and nurture to be the best projects that they can possibly be. 
Uh, and we're so lucky to have her in her new role, continuing to provide vision and leadership for the community uh, in a way that I think is going gonna, is gonna to bear um, an equal reward for all of us. Uh, and so uh, I don't know how I could, I could capture it any better than that, so I'm just going to give up and congratulate Kathy on receiving the President's Award for Open Courseware Excellence. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I am both honored and humbled by this award, and particularly thank the Open Courseware Consortium Board for this recognition. This recognition certainly extends far beyond me. It certainly extends to Mike Smith, and it extends to the Hewlett Foundation, who had the vision and the reality and the willingness to take a chance on a whole new field that was unclear, but realized that the foundation had that possibility to make it happen. I think for me, over the past year, 10 years, it's been an incredible both personal and professional journey. This, has, this experience of being part of this consortium and the growth of the OER movement has put me in touch with many of you who are in the room, and those who I don't know, I am sure that I will be characterizing in the same way. This is an incredibly, incredibly intelligent group of people. The intellect is enormous. The curiosity is endless. The vision is boundless. The willingness to take risks is incredibly important. And the creativity that exists in the room and all the people, and I know you are all the leaders of this movement, has been a delight to participate in in every in every way. Every morning I have the unique opportunity of getting up and trying to figure out what the landscape will look like tomorrow. And we don't always know. And part of this excitement of this vision and of this space that we've been in is that we actually get to create that landscape. And in many ways through the past 10 years, the vision has been muddy. It has been unclear. But we've always persevered because we've always believed in the ultimate vision of sharing knowledge and equalizing access for individuals, institutions, and faculty throughout the world. So that has been the mission that has, that vision that has really drawn us together. And it's the vision that will continue to draw us in the next decade. So I definitely look forward to the next decade of this um, continuing um, journey. And I particularly look forward to it with my role as CEO of Creative Commons. And I know as the CEO of Creative Commons, behind me sits a staff of 25 in the headquarters office in Mountain View, sits 70 international affiliates who sit across the global community. And I know that behind each of you who sit here is a team. It's a team that supports you, that supported me at ULIT, that supports the vision of where we're going. And on behalf of all of you, thank you for this award. Okay, so riffing on some of the earlier uh, presentations today, this, this whole uh, event and presentation is in my mind modular which is an advantage because it gives me chunks that I can manage. But I'm getting some of them out of order. So I, I just wanted to, to say about the uh, President's Award, um, it's an award we created specifically to recognize contributions that we had no other category we could fit them into. It's not probably something we'll do every year, um, but when we come across a contribution like Kathy's, how can you not? So um, We're going to take a, a break, let you guys get some food because I'm sure you're all starving. Um, we'll come back in a little while. Meal. So this way, we're only ruining half your meal. So, um, uh, just a, a note on Kathy. As I've been thinking about this over intermission, there was one thing I wanted to share. That <laughs> no, this is um, one of the ironies of her being now at Creative Commons is uh, I was looking for a good shared image of her for the slide, and there are like two images of Kathy that I can find on the web. 
um, which is just an absolute shame. So I, let's make it our mission, please, to get photos of Kathy up so we can <laughs> have more to choose from when we're, when we're honoring her the next time this comes around. Okay, we're on to the site awards. We have three site awards, best news site, uh, technical achievement, and landmark site. These were all announced ahead of time, in part because we were hoping we could get uh, representatives of the uh, award-winning institutions here to receive the awards, and I'm pleased really to say that I think we've done that for all three of them. So it's great to have uh, representatives here this evening. The first is the Best News Site Award. And, uh, you know, the board, had, the, the board of directors had to think long and hard about the individual awards, um, but I got to tell you, the work to sort through uh, Best News Site, Technical Achievement, Best Site, and all of the courseware was an incredible effort, and it was, it was an effort, um, Brandon can attest to this, that was hampered by the fact that I was the one organizing it. So um, I really appreciate all of the people who are on the awards committee, all of their efforts and all of their patience with uh, me continually pushing the schedule back. But in the end, I'm very pleased with uh, the sites and the courses that we're uh, able to honor this evening. Um, so for the first award, the best news site, uh, we chose uh, the University of Simitara Otara's Open Courseware, uh, which is one I saw the announcement of uh, when it came out early last year. Um, in part, it struck me because uh, we kind of already had a USU OCW somewhere. And so when I saw USU OCW launched, uh, I thought Utah State launched a long time ago. What's going on here? So I went and I checked out the site. And even then, I was really impressed uh, with uh, both the, the amount of content, the level of content, uh, and with the organization and presentation of, of the site. It really is a, a wonderful site. I'm going to spare you the site demo, but I do hope that all of you will take the opportunity uh, to visit this site and move through the materials uh, and see what an elegant job they've done of, of presenting it. But first, the amount of material. 177 courses in 12 disciplines on this site uh, that was just launched last year, uh, including 20 textbooks. And I can tell you there are 20 textbooks on this site because when you look at the content, they've organized it so beautifully, you can see exactly what kind of contents are in the courses as you scan the page. Um, it's, it's very, very simple in its presentation. The materials are very straightforward. Typically, they're uh, print materials. Um, so it's as straightforward an open courseware presentation as you can find. Um, uh, content is in two languages, English and Indonesian. Uh, and it, it was just a delight to, to review the content on this side. So it's my pleasure to present uh, to the University of Sumatera Otara OCW team uh, the Best News Site Award for Open Courseware Excellence. Do we have them in the room? Are they here? Okay, I thought we had them here. We'll have to track them down. They're around. Oh, well, please, come up. I didn't see you. Willem, behave. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Thank you. Would you like to say a few words? Yes. You know, please. Good evening, everyone. On behalf of the members of the University of North Sumatra, we would like to thank OCWU Consortium Board for giving us over the, the, the award. I am from Indonesia. Indonesia is a uh, in the Southeast Asia. Uh, we have uh, three, uh, the biggest island. The first island is the Papua, the second island is the Kalimantan or Borneo, and the, the third island is Sumatra. We are from the Sumatra. We, we are close to the Singapore or the Malaysia. We have uh, 3,000 universities in Indonesia. We are number six in Indonesia. And we have uh, about uh, 38,000 students in our, our universities. Thank you.
All right, the next award we have is the award for technical achievement uh, in open courseware. Uh, those of you who are from the United States know that April is tax time uh, in the United States, and that every year presents a dilemma for me, because if you've ever filled out a U.S. tax form, you know there's a little box there that says occupation. And I, <laughs> yeah, so typically what I put in the, uh, uh, the occupation box, because it's so small, is educational technologists. But the third table back here can tell you that I know just about nothing about technology. So it's, it's a complete farce. Um, what, what we do uh, depends on educators uh, and educational materials. But underlying those materials are the technologies that we use uh, to distribute the content worldwide. And OpenCourseWare wouldn't be uh, possible without a whole host of technical achievements, some of which I think Tim O'Reilly talked about before, uh, some of which are more particular to our little corner of the world, the Open Courseware uh, Consortium and the Open Educational Resources world. Uh, and I, I think that part of the problem we face is that many of us in this community are not technologists. Uh, and it's very difficult to build the scale of tools that we need um, with the subset of our community who are technologists. And they labor long and hard often uh, to uh, create the, the uh, uh, pieces of software that they create. Um, and that leaves us in, a, in a, a real dilemma when it comes to platforms. Um, we can either adopt an existing tool that isn't quite made for open courseware, or, or we can build our own. And there are some spectacular examples uh, of ones that have certainly been built specifically for open courseware and OER, Connections being one, EduCommons being another. Um, but there certainly are not enough of them out there. And so every time a new platform uh, emerges that can be used to help us do our job better, it's a significant occasion for the community. So this is a young piece of technology, but it's a piece of technology that caught the attention of many and was recommended to us uh, in the awards, uh, on the awards committee. And uh, uh, so in reviewing it, w we saw what they saw in it, w which was a whole new opportunity for us to share educational content in new ways. Um, and so for that achievement, it's, it's my privilege to present the Technical Achievement Award for Open Courseware Excellence to the Orbit Program from the University of Michigan. I got to ask, what do you put on your tax form? <laughs> Uh, educational researcher. Yes. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Orbit. Uh, really, I work with a pretty awesome team at the University of Michigan, uh, the Open Michigan team, and uh, the developers and the Open Education Specialists and, um, and Ted. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we, we do a lot of great work, and uh, I really appreciate the fact that the consortium has recognized uh, really cool stuff. Thank you. Oh, sorry, Drew, there are a couple of things I wanted to point out. This is, again, going with the theme of doing things out of order here. Um, just some of the features of, of Orbit I, I wanted to describe really quickly. Drupal-based, uh, course and resource-based navigation, flex flexible workflow, CC integration, which, uh, you know, is part of our community norm, and RSS distribution. Um, okay, the landmark site, this is the final of the three site awards, the landmark site award for open courseware excellence. A funny uh, story about this, and I think one of the reasons why we really um, need these kind of award ceremonies and we need people to be digging through the content that's out there is because some things literally get lost in translation. Uh, and so uh, this site was nominated as one of the landmark site candidates. And as I was going through the sites, I came to this site and I, I clicked on the course list and there were three courses there. And I thought, OK, that's odd. And I, I emailed Pedro. I said, Pedro, can you help me out with this? Why is it that uh, there are only three courses on this, this, this site that's been described as one of the leading sites in Spain? Uh, and he said, well, that's because you're looking at the English course list, dummy. <laughs> and 
Sure enough, my browser had defaulted to English, and when I flipped it over to Spanish, there were uh, 134 courses there. Um, and so uh, that's just really the beginning of what you'll find if you dig through this site, a tremendous amount of content. Um, but for, for in as much as Sumatra Otera was a, a straightforward uh, presentation of uh, just the, the written content, this one is just dizzying in the kinds of things that they built into it. And it's a real experience to sort of see uh, all of the different options that you have available when you come to the content. So in addition to the 134 courses, they've integrated with their institutional repository, which I believe is a DSpace repository. Is that right? Yeah. Um, they have export to wiki function, uh, functionality. They have search and discovery tools. Uh, that really make it a, a fantastic experience that uh, certainly would be much better for me uh, if my Spanish were better. So um, I really, uh, even if you don't speak Spanish, it's worth a trip through this site. If you do, uh, it's definitely worth checking out. So with that, it's my real pleasure to present to University of Alicante the Landmark Site Award for Open Courseware Excellence. Congratulations. Thank you very much for the award. Uh, for the University of Alicante, it's a great honor to, to accept it. The Open Course World in the University of Alicante is not an isolated project. It's a, it's a new puzzle piece of a whole strategy Politics, the, the whole policy of the vice president of the uh, educational innovation and technology. This policy uh, link open access and free software project. As far as uh, this, uh, all uh, share the, the same idea, uh, the relevance of sharing. Learning is the greatest experience of our lives. Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> this strange citation of Star Wars were, were pronounced by Paco Sanguino, who is the third member of the Open Courseware team in the University of Alicante. And I have to say that he was wrong and right. He was wrong because, as far as I know, Obi-Wan has never said those words. But he was right because uh, for all of us, learning is a great experience. And most of the time it's an experience based on sharing knowledge. And I think this is precisely what we do in Open Courseware. We share knowledge between staffs, between academics, and more than that, we share knowledge with anybody who is interested in learning. Uh, in some extent, I think this is a sort of our common business, no? And I think that everybody here knows that there's no business like our business. There's no business at all. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, in any case, uh, of course, uh, what is important is that it's a common business. And I want to say that it's not our project, it's Overall, your project too. And we are, uh, for that, uh, really very honored to accept this uh, award. And we want to thank the, the committee, the Open Courseware Consortium, and the whole Open Courseware community. And as a final wish and reminding Paco, I want to say, may the force be with us. <laughs> and I hope. And I hope we all together can bring the open course, the open courseware, to infinity <laughs> and beyond. Okay. Thank you very much, and and happy happy birthday for to MIT and, and open courseware too. Huh? Yeah.
All right, only 10 more to go. <laughs> um, no, actually, so what we're down to now is the course awards. Um, we did not uh, announce these in advance, uh, in part because uh, uh, we didn't have enough time built into the schedule to make the decision, um, but also uh, in, in part because we didn't want to make people feel bad if they weren't able to come and attend and, and get the award um, because the you know, travel budgets are terrible and, and so forth. But um, what we're going to do, I think we have representatives of most of the institutions that are going to be honored here. I have two slides. On one slide, there's going to be the um, awards for multimedia courses. And on one slide, there's the text and still images courses. Uh, and um, so what I'm going to do is share each slide. And at that time, if there's someone from one of the institutions uh, that's won the award, please just stand and be recognized for your institution's work. Uh, and after the ceremony, we have uh, certificates up here that you can bring home to the faculty member from your organization. Uh, so, uh, you know, w when we put these together, uh, the only ground rule I think we set was we want to honor as many institutions as possible. So we didn't give uh, two awards to any one institution. Um, but beyond that, we really just looked at the, at the, the quality of the presentation of the materials uh, and in doing so, I think we came up with an amazing representation of the breadth and the richness of our community, both sort of the types of institutions, the geographies, and uh, the uh, subjects that are covered by these courses. I think they really show the richness of the open courseware consortium community and what we're providing to the world. So first, text and still images, we're, we're recognizing courses from University of Cape Town, University of Notre Dame, uh, University of Cantabra, Cantabria, uh, univer the National University of Distance Education in Costa Rica. I won't butcher the, the Spanish on that one. And uh, University Carlos uh, III de Madrid. Uh, so these are the award winners. And I know we have representatives of uh, some of these institutions in the room. Uh, so if you would, would you please uh, stand at this time and we'll congratulate your faculty. Uh, for their outstanding contributions. <laughs> uh, and then in the, the multimedia category, we have uh, Open University of Netherlands represented, UC Irvine, the Middle East Technical University from Turkey, University de Politecnica de Valencia, and University of Murcia in Spain. Um, so again, I mean, if you look at the, the list of courses that are here, you look at the subjects that are represented. Uh, we have occupational therapy. We have multimedia technology, uh, Greek and Roman mythology, uh, entertainment, uh, travel entertainment, and uh, administrative basics. You have metabolism, uh, music, chemistry, mathematics, uh, f physics? No, physical education. Um, so, I mean, it's a tremendous uh, variety of uh, materials that are, that are pre presented up there, and I really think that it, it illustrates uh, the richness of what we're providing here. So if there are representatives of uh, these courses present, and I know there are, would you please stand at this time and, and let us congratulate you as well. And as I said, there's certificates up here. Please come up and grab the ones from your institutions and bring them home to their faculty with our most sincere congratulations, okay? Um, congratulations to all of this year's nominees and all of this year's winners. Uh, at some point, we'll try to organize uh, a showcase of all of the videos that everybody delivered, uh, highlighting their, the features of their courses and some of their sites. Uh, I think it's a wonderful thing, a wonderful resource for all of us to get a better look at some, some of the richness uh, that is provided for the community. Thanks again to the board uh, and the award committee. Uh, a, a small note here, despite how badly I made it sound, it's a great fun to, to serve on the committee. So, so please sign up. Uh, I'm going to chair it one more year at least. And of course, thanks again to our sponsors at Next. They've been very gracious in supporting this event and in supporting uh, the entire conference. So uh, thank you all, and let's, one, let's have one more round of applause for all of our winners this evening.